Today, we're going to train a machine learning model, not using Python or TensorFlow or Spark or any other library like that. We are going to use SQL. Not only we're going to train a machine learning model, we are also going to run some batch predictions as well as some real time streaming predictions so that you can deploy that model as an API and integrate that with an app. The use case that we're going to look at is of predicting taxi fare. I'm sure you've booked an Uber cab before. When you enter your source and your destination, the app tells you exactly how much it is going to charge. But how does the app calculate that? Obviously, you can imagine that distance is an important factor, but there might be other factors. For example, here you can see that the app is able to tell you how long it will take based on the traffic. And that is probably a factor where I'm boarding the taxi from probably is another important factor. If I'm in the city center, that might be more expensive than if I'm in a remote area or a countryside. And there might be many other factors like which car is it going to be for the taxi and, and maybe many other factors. So to make sure that we don't have to hard code all of these different rules, an ideal way to come up with this price is using machine learning. And that's the use case that we're going after. We're not going to look at all the different options that are available, all the different features. We are only going to stick to one feature, which is the distance. Now, obviously in the real world, there will be many, many features like the day of the week, the location, the time, the traffic and all of that. But we're going to only stick to one feature, which is the distance. So essentially, we're going to take a bunch of data from the Chicago taxi trips data set and we're going to find the relationship between the distance and the fare for a taxi trip. Now to use this data and to train our machine learning model, I'm going to use a product called Google Cloud BigQuery. It's a global data warehouse that's made available to you as a managed service on the Google Cloud platform. So let's get into the GCP console and look at the data. So this is the BigQuery console. We are going to use the taxi trips table from the Chicago taxi trips data set. It's an open source data set that's available on BigQuery as a part of the public data sets that come with BigQuery. It comes with many different columns, but we're going to stick to only two columns, the distance and the fare. So we're going to find a relationship between the distance of the trip and the fare of the trip. I have a query here and this query basically is going to produce our training data set. So we are looking at the fare and the trip miles, so the distance in miles from this table, and we're gonna trim the edges. So we are looking at fare between $3 and $100 and the distance between 2.5 miles to 50 miles, and we're looking at all the data for 2020. You can see that we have the two columns here, the fare and the miles, and in total, we have 1.275 million rows. If you look at, if you visualize this data, you can see that the data looks somewhat like this. So you can already see that there is a strong correlation between distance and fare. Now, obviously there is a lot of noise and that's probably coming from all the different features that also contribute to the fare apart from the distance. Going back to this query, how do I convert this into a query so that I can train a machine learning model? I only need to add two lines on top of this. And these are gonna be my two lines. I add a create or replace model command. I could ideally do only create model, but if I was retraining, create or replace would be useful. So create or replace and then the model name. And then we put a bunch of options. BigQuery ML comes with a lot of options and check out the link below for a list of all the options. But here we are giving three options. One is we're telling it what the model type is. Here we are saying linear regression and linear regression is basically a machine learning algorithm to create a linear relationship between the input variables and the output variables. We are telling the create model command, what is the output variable? What is the variable that you have to predict? What is the label for this machine learning model? And that is the column fair. And this is coming from this select command. And then we are giving it a regularization parameter. Regularization is a concept in machine learning to prevent overfitting of the model on the training data. So you want the model to be as generalized as possible so that it can also predict for new data and does not learn the training data too much. 
So that's what this is for. So just by adding these two lines, I can create a machine learning model. So let's run this and see how long it takes and what is the model output like. So I've just run this. Uh, it might take another couple of minutes and then we'll be ready with our machine learning model. All right, it took a couple of minutes and now our model is ready. So I can go into my data set and look at the model. Now the model comes with a bunch of uh, information. It tells you what the training options were. If I go into the training tab, you will see that it comes with a bunch of pretty graphs. So most important is this loss graph. You can see how the loss was decreasing. This tells us that the model was learning. It learned for five or six iteration and then it uh, basically achieved a steady state, which means the model was fully learned by this time. And you might not notice, but there are two lines here. So it tells you the training loss and the evaluation loss. And it is good to see that both of these loss lines are decreasing at the same rate, which tells you that the model is not overfitting, model is learning properly on both the training data as well as the validation set, which is the evaluation data. Now, if I go into the evaluation tab, it gives you a bunch of evaluation matrices. We're not going to go in depth into each one of them, but maybe you can look at R squared. R squared is a measure of how close are your predicted values to the actual fact values for a test data or an evaluation data. Here you can see that it is 0 0.94, which is actually pretty good. One means there was a perfect prediction each time. So this is actually pretty good. The model is doing pretty, pretty good. Now let's test this out on a test data set. So let's run a batch prediction on a test data set and see how well the model actually performs. And this is the query that I'm going to use to test the model. So here you see, this is the main query where I'm selecting the data set. This is very similar to the previous query that we had. So what we're doing here is we're selecting the trips from 2021, so everything with timestamp more than 2021, we are looking at the number of miles between 2.5 to 50 like last time, and we are taking the trips, and this is gonna be our input for the model. We are also looking at the average actual fare for that trip, for those trips in 2021 for each each input. So let's say there were five trips what with 2.5 miles, then for five of them, what was the actual average of the price? Let's say that is $10. And then if we predict $10 as well, which means we are very close to the predictions. That's what I'm going to try. I'm going to run this query now. And you see that it presents the result really fast. So in less than a second, it was able to give me the results. And if I try to visualize these results, so you can see that the, the model found a linear relationship between the distance and the fare, and that's depicted by the red line here. And then the blue dots are actually the actual data. So here you see that the model was able to learn from the data. You were able to make batch predictions, which is all great. But then what about real time predictions? When you are inside an Uber app, you want to be able to predict the fare of a trip in real time. How do you do that? So for that, you have to go back to your model. So this is my model. And I have to click on this button, which is called export model. So when I click on this, it asks for a GCS location. So you can provide a GCS location. You give a location where when you click on submit, the model would get saved. Now I already saved the model before this, so I'm not going to do this again. But once you do this, it would basically process this request and the model would be available as a bunch of files inside this Google Cloud Storage location. And then you got to go into Vertex AI, which is the unified AI platform on Google Cloud Platform. And inside Vertex AI, you got to go into models. Now from here, you got to import that model. So you see this import button here. This is what you have to click. When I click on import, it asks me a model name. So you can give something like uh, taxi fare and put a region, US central one is fine. Just make sure that the previous bucket location, the GS link that you had given while exporting the model, make sure that the bucket is in the same region as the model. 
So if your bucket is multi-regional and you're deploying it in US central one, that might not work. Make sure that you have a regional bucket. Now, once you do that, it will ask you for some more settings. So you can leave it at a TensorFlow model. You can say TensorFlow 2.4. Uh, and this is where you give your bucket path. So the path from the previous step where you exported the model, just put the same path here. So when you do that, and when you click on import here, the model would get imported. I have mine imported here. So you can see BQML fair ta taxi fair prediction. This was the model. It got imported here once I click on the import button there. And then there is a third step before you can do real time predictions and that is to go into vertex ci again and go into endpoints you got to create a new endpoint to do that click on create button and put an endpoint name so let's say taxi fair and select a model so you can select your model from the drop down this is coming from the models tab in the previous step and then you need the machine type so you can select whatever machine type you want and that's it then you can just click on create and that's pretty much it. With this, you will have an endpoint in the endpoint tab. Now this endpoint is basically a REST endpoint. This is an API endpoint that can be integrated in any app. It can be used with any system and so on. I'm gonna hit this endpoint right now using Postman so that I can show you a real-time prediction. All right, so to test this out, I have it set up in my Postman. The URL, actually, you get it from the endpoints tab on the Google Cloud Console. So you have the endpoint here that we just deployed. If you click on the sample request button here, you will see that it gives you a bunch of information. And this is where you get the URL from. So you have this curl request and the URL is available there. I'm using the same URL. So over here, I have the URL and then I have my body of the post request where I have said, what is the distance? So what is going to be my price if I have to travel 25 miles? And when I click on send, it gives me the response that that is going to be $70. If I change this input, so let's say 10 miles, then it tells me that the price is going to be $27. So there you go. This is how you train machine learning models and run batch predictions and real time predictions using SQL and nothing else. I hope this was useful. Please subscribe to the channel and see you around next time. Thank you.